Well, let's get some reaction from those opposition parties now. We cross live to our reporter, Artyom Tinkana. She's in the parliamentary precinct. Arti, good afternoon to you. The president this afternoon attempting to bring the country together, it seemed. A very quick session. In fact, a lot of MPs are still asking themselves, is that it? We overheard some opposition parties who stepped out now outside of the National Assembly Chamber. Those who joined physically, of course, are still asking themselves, is that it? Other MPs, remember, Stephen joined via the virtual online platform because this is a joint hybrid sitting of both houses, the uh, National Assembly as well as the National Council of Provinces. Now, without wasting any time, let's get that reaction action from opposition parties. I'm going to start off with the ACDP. I also have with me uh, the FF Plus, but won't you uh, just begin here, uh, Mr. Kenneth Mesher, by telling us what your reaction is to the president's reply? Well, he, as expected, um, he was not in the house yesterday when there was a responses. And so what he did was just to continue where he left last week. He just continued. He did not touch on the issues we raised. And there were questions we asked that we expected the president to answer. And he did not touch on anything just to show that he was not listening to what we were saying. So it is discouraging that the topic today was response to the state of the nation address. And he didn't respond to anything we said. You know, he just spoke in generalities saying, well, there were a lot of criticisms and we must learn from criticisms, something that he says every year. So we wanted to hear what the president is saying about the real issues that we raised. I raised an very important issue of the national development plan compared to the Great Reset. Which one is going to take preeminence? Because he told the nation that he's going to pursue and promote the new world order that is, and that is also overheading the Great Reset. He said nothing about that. So I'm going to say to those who listen to what he said today, the president just, it was just to be continued when he left last Thursday. Last Thursday. So today he just carried on from where he left. So I'm disappointed, and from what I've been hearing other political parties say, and political leaders, they are all disappointed because they are all raised issues that they expected the president to touch on. The president said nothing about it. Okay, thank you so much, Mr. Kenneth Mesher. We're going to keep it moving. Mr. Moldler, if you can come closer uh, while we also stand by for the DA. Uh, your reaction to the president's response? Well, I'm sorry to say, but uh, with this kind of response, the president is undermining the institution of parliament. My program clearly indicates that we are supposed to deal with a reply to the debate. The president did not reply to the debate at all. This was sewn up part two, um, and that's, uh, that's a travesty. With all due respect, Parliament deserves that there should be a reply to our debates. The president didn't deal with issues. He didn't deal with the debate at all. Um, we didn't hear anything about local government and the problems in local government. We didn't hear anything about corruption in terms of how they're going to deal with that. Uh, he talks about how important tourism is and then the government comes up with plans that discriminate against certain sectors of our society. It's very, very disappointing and it's an undermining of this institution with all due respect. Mr Moldla, one of the issues that were raised by Mr Peter Grunewald during his debate um, and his response to the President's speech was the issue that you speak of, the exclusion of some businesses, particularly white business yes. owners. Won't you uh, perhaps just briefly explain to us that element? Yes, the problem is that COVID does not discriminate against anyone, no individual or no business. It's, it's, it's attacking all of us. But when it comes to government's relief measures, it's being used to further the government's policies of black economic empowerment and it discriminates against certain owners. And it's, it's, it's absolutely ludicrous. Many of those owners have many, many black people in their service. They are now forced to close down. Um, the, the, the ANC government has lost the plot altogether. There's no doubt. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Cornelius Mulder from the FF Plus. Now I'm going to bring in uh, the leader of the official opposition party, John Stenazen. Thank you so much for your time. Now your reaction to the president's speech. Well, very disappointing. And uh, you know, certainly I don't know if the president actually was part of the debate the last two days, because what we've seen is not a response to the state of the nation. It was a regurgitation of much of what was uh, said out in his sonar address. So very, very disappointing. But also president very clearly much still the nowhere man in the nowhere land talking about a state pharmaceutical company and he's going to create one 
We've got a state pharmaceutical company. It's called Ketla Pella. It was set up in 2012, and it's been absolutely nowhere in the COVID-19 pandemic. So this is all stuff from uh, that is so far and removed out of the reality of the lived experience of people. The hunger, the unemployment, the um, lack of... A, we're going to have the vaccine as soon as possible. We, everyone's going to have herd immunity. Well, when is as soon as possible? Is it the end of this year? Is it halfway through this year? Is it next year? That uh, no concrete time frames. And I can tell you, a lot of what we heard today, we're going to be talking about, I promise you, RT, next year when you interview me, we'll be talking about the same plans and promises that are going to be made with very little delivery. Sure. A number of DA MPs spoke about various issues, but one that comes to mind right now is an issue that you brought up with regards to the internal factional battles within the ANC that then compromises the president in the fight against corruption. I mean, today we saw the Minister of Police, uh, Mr. Begitel, visiting the former uh, president, Jacob Zuma, in Kandla. What is your reaction to all of that? It's all just very odd. As far as I'm concerned, the law must apply equally to every citizen. It doesn't matter if you're a sitting president, a former president, or whether you're an ordinary citizen. Uh, there's one set of laws in the country. Why is the former president getting special treatment? Why is he getting a visit from the police minister? What he should have got was a visit from a police van with a warrant for his arrest for failure to appear before the Zondo Commission as uh, the Constitutional Court set out. That is how the law follows its course. And you can only hit but think there's two sets of laws in the country, which is why people like Ace Magashule, Arthur Fraze and others never, ever feel the effect of the law because they are protected game. If you're an ordinary citizen and you skip out on a summons, there's an immediate reaction from the law enforcement agencies. When you're clearly a former president or a connected ANC cadre who could upset the apple cart for Mr. Ramaphosa internally, different story. Fantastic. Thank you Thanks. so much, John Stenhazen from the Democratic Alliance. Now I'm going to bring in the IFP, Mr. Shengwa. Thank you so much. Uh, well, you were one of the MPs that were like, is that it? What is your response? Well, it was a missed opportunity on the part of the president to substantively deal with the issues that were raised in the debate. That's precisely why, why we have the responses to um, the, the, the Sona. And so the president really spoke in very general and generic terms. Uh, and there's nothing that we can take away from it. It was uh, a repetition. It was an opportunity for him to improve um, from last week. And look, in all honesty, we are all in the same boat here in so far as uh, what needs to be done. We are talking about South Africans getting jobs, improving the economy, improving our health care, infrastructure rollout. But it does not seem that the people in power fully understand or have a roadmap on how to achieve that. The president speaks about working together. He speaks about uh, bringing everybody together. But there too, the president keeps pushing everybody away when it, it, it's crunch time, when we must actually have these meetings. We cannot have togetherness just at the podium. It has to be practicalized. Prince Bitalese substantively raised the issue, for example, of reconciliation between the IFP and the ANC. And I think that has to be completed. That is part and parcel of working together in correcting the wrongs of the past and so on. The president speaks about progress. There's regression. He's to talking to us about looking at uh, the, the assets in the balance sheet. Well, I mean, corruption is eating away at the economy. It's eating away at the potential um, of South Africans to improve their sustainable livelihood. So the president's um, uh, outlook of progress seems to be contrary to the lived daily realities on the ground when people um, do not have water, a failure to maintain infrastructure, uh, um, amongst other things. So the things that we are looking at uh, 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 in, in so far as what the president has said um, today certainly did not come out uh, as, as a response one to SONA. We fully agree, of course, on being a hopeful nation. We fully agree um, on, on positivity. But the fundamental issue is when it comes to actually having these things done, there's a lack of political will from the ANC benches. Uh, speaking about politics, one of the issues that was raised by the IFP during the debate was the, the politicization of the vaccine program. And we saw yesterday how the Minister of Health, as well as him, the president, getting that single jab of the Johnson & Johnson. What is your reaction to that? 
Well, of course, we want uh, the vaccine to be rolled out. Prince Peter Lizzy was quite clear that um, we welcome the 80,000 um, vials that have arrived. But in a population of 60 million, it, it gives very little hope. Um, yes, it, it's symbolic and important for the president to take the first jab, particularly to deal and push back uh, on the, um, you know, uh, the conspiracy theories that are out there and so on and so forth. But um, it is early days, and the president was speaking about how they have successfully and will be. It's still early days. You're dealing with 80,000 vaccines only. And so the secrecy and the, va- and, and the lack of transparency, insofar as this program is concerned, insofar as how procurement is being done, spending is being done, is precisely what is causing a, a na- national anxiety. So let's move beyond the, the, the symbolism and actually deal with the practicalities. The Eastern Cape's um, health MEC was fired today. What does that do to stability um, in that in that process? Not that she was any competent, but the fact that um, you, you, you had somebody appointed. There's an acting HOD of health in that particular province. And that is where you've seen a lot of uh, uh, problems emanating from. And so uh, the, the issue of the vaccine and will be debated next week um, uh, in, a spe- in, a, in an urgent debate of um, public importance precisely because government has not covered it. Okay, I'm afraid we're going to have to leave some of the reaction to that. We'll bring more, of course, uh, reaction there to the president's speech, the response to the State of the Nation debate.